Hi friends. Uh, so today I'm going to read a book called Players in Pigtails by Shanna Corey, illustrated by Rebecca Gibbon. And this is actually um, sort of a true story about how there was a professional girls, women's um, baseball league back during uh a war when men were called off to go into the military to fight in a war and the people still in America um, they still wanted baseball um, and so this is the story of how there came to be a women's professional baseball league. Katie Casey was was not good at being a girl. At least not the kind of girl everyone thought she should be. Her clothing was crumpled, her knitting was nodding, knotted, and her dancing was a disaster. And no matter how hard she tried, her heart just wasn't in home ec. But there was one thing Katie was good at baseball. Katie could catch any ball with any mitt with her eyes closed. She could hit any ball with any bat with one hand behind her back. She preferred sliding to sewing, batting to baking, and home runs to homecoming. Her parents were not at all pleased. Why not piano or painting, they pleaded. What good is baseball to a girl? But Katie wouldn't be swayed. She walked baseball, she talked baseball, she even dreamed baseball. She went to the ballpark every chance she got. She loved the hot dogs and peanuts. She loved the shouting and singing, but most of all, she loved watching the professional players play ball. Sometimes she even imagined that she was one of them. Every spring, she showed up for Fairfield High Team tryouts, and every spring, she was turned away without even getting a try. A uh, better stick to ballet, the boy said. What good is baseball to a girl? But baseball was starting to change. America was at war and more and more of the country's boys, including the professional baseball players, were going off to fight. The fields were almost empty and the fans were getting frantic. Even President Roosevelt was worried. What was a country without a national pastime? No one wanted to find out. Finally, Philip Wrigley, the owner of the Chicago Cubs, had an idea. If women can work in factories and even join the army, he said, why can't they play ball? Outrageous, everyone said. Girls playing baseball? No one will pay to see girls play ball. But Mr. Wrigley didn't listen. He sent out 30 scouts to find players for his league. The first and only girls professional baseball league. The scouts searched high and low, near and far, and to be perfectly frank, they were flabbergasted by what they found. <clears throat> All over the country, girls were playing ball. And they were playing just as good as boys in Washington, Texas, California, Florida, Louisiana, New York. One of them was Katie Casey. Say, sister, said a scout when he saw her curveball, how'd you like to go to Chicago to try out for a real team? Would she? 
Katie didn't even have to think twice. She went straight home and packed her bags, kissed her parents goodbye, and boarded the very next train. When she got to Wrigley Field, she broke into a grin. There were hundreds of girls. There were farm girls and city girls, tall girls and short girls, girls from far away and girls from down the block, but no matter what they look like or where they came from, they all had one thing in common. They all loved baseball. Katie had never felt so at home. Sign her up, said the coach of the Kenosha Comets. Sorry, Kenosha Comets. When he saw her swing, the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League was on its way. Everyone was curious about the strange happenings at Wrigley Field. Unheard of, said one concerned citizen. Girls don't like sports. Oh, it's certainly not ladylike, agreed another. What good is baseball to a girl, blared the newspaper headline. The league managers heard the talk and their stomachs started to twitch. They knew their girls were ready to play ball, but maybe the country wasn't quite ready for their girls. The managers decided to launch an emergency campaign to show the country just how ladylike baseball could be. First, they designed special uniforms for the girls to wear. Dresses? Asked Katie, but she shrugged and put one on. After all, at least she was getting to play ball. Then the manager signed the teams up for charm school. Pinkies out, girls. Posture, cried the teacher. Think swans. Finally, it was time for the big test. The girls were graceful, they were elegant, they were perfectly charming, and they were ready to play ball. On opening day, 16 swan-like players emerged from each locker room and onto the field, but something wasn't right. Katie heard a giggling in the stands. It grew louder and louder. Careful, you might break a nail, girls, someone shouted. Players in pigtails, roared the crowd. Is this a ballpark or a ballroom? Everyone laughed themselves silly until... The All-American Girls Professional Baseball League started to play, and they played by far the best ball any of them had ever played. By the bottom of the ninth, the score was Rockford Peaches 9, Kenosha Comets 6. The bases were loaded, and Katie Casey was at the bat for the Comets. She stepped up to the plate and looked out at the stands. She'd been waiting her whole life for this. The pitcher threw the ball, and Katie swung. Crack! The ball sailed up up, up into the air, and Katie took off running. It's a grand slam home run, shouted the announcer. The crowd went wild, and Katie cheered right along with them because for once, no one was asking what good baseball was to a girl. They were all too busy talking about how good girls were for baseball. And that was a long time ago. That was in the 40s when it was World War II. And people had very different ideas about what girls should do and what boys should do and who should do what. And I know that there are lots of girls who like to play sports. And I know there's lots of boys who like to do things like painting and reading and writing. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I hope you enjoyed the story.